Hi there, welcome to another episode of Tech Sundays and in this episode we are going to talk about parallel period X function. The very first, let's talk about what is it. This tax function is going to return a parallel period of dates by the given set of dates and a specified interval. And remember that it's going to return you a table. Its syntax is pretty simple. You have to just write the tax function name, which is parallel period. Then you have to give the dates, the number of intervals, plus one, minus one, etc. And the interval, which is going to be your month, year or quarter. Over here, you can see the parameters. The parameters, as I just mentioned, dates. That is going to be the name of the column containing dates or one column table containing dates. Then the number of intervals like 1, plus 1, negative 1, 2, etc. And the interval are going to be your one of these like month, quarter or year. Now let's go to Dex.do website where we are going to perform a demo where I'm going to show you how you can utilize this Dex function. As you can see, currently I'm on Dex.2 website. Over here, you would get a data set, data model, everything. You have to just write your code like you are writing in a Dex Studio. And this website is really very helpful. And thanks to SQLPI.com guys that they have performed a splendid job in order to create this portal for everyone who's willing to learn Dex. They can do their exercises over here. Now, let's first use the evaluate function which is going to help me to run my dex function over here then i'm using calculate dex function and inside it i'm using this period dex function over here as i mentioned first we have to give the date column name which is i'm taking from date my date table then i'm shifting one year back over here year is going to be your interval whether you want to go back or go forward for year, month or quarter. And for this specific, I am specified a date, which is going to be my date date column, where I have mentioned like 20th of July, 2010. So let's see what it's going to give me. Ideally, I should get all the dates in a column or a table of all the dates with one column, where it's shifting to 2009, because I have already said one year back. So let me just execute this function so click on run and here you can see that i'm getting all the dates for that year from 2009 till the end of 2009 if i'll go down so you can see this is the end of 2009 which is 31st of december 2009 remember that it's shifting one year back that means it's going to give you the whole year dates not just starting from 20th of july over here month and day I have no significance it's just taking an interval of year now let's move on to the second part where I'm using month instead of year over here I'm using offset zero that means it should return me all the dates or a table with all the dates of July month of 2010 so let me just run it and here you can see from 1st of July 2010 it's returned me the end of July that is 31st of July 2010 now I hope you are getting the idea where we are going with this text function now let's move forward and in this one I'm using two dates but remember I'm using the or condition over here which is going to be utilized as true and false and over here I'm not saying they both should match either of them should get match so over here what I'm doing first I am extended it to plus one month that means if I have July month it should give me the dates of August not only that I'm again shifting it for one more month that means I have another date which is over here which is August so it should also give me all the dates of September that means now what I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all the dates of month 8th and 9th August and September so let's see whether we are going to get them or not. Now you can see it's starting from 1st of August 2010 to all the way 31st of September 2010. So that's how you can even use it if you would like to shift it and extend it. Now in the final demo part, what I'm going to show you over here, I'm going to calculate some of the sales amount for the quarters. And I have two quarters over here. 
sales for the current quarter because offset is zero over here and sales amount for the previous quarter where I'm saying offset is minus one. And going further, what I'm doing over here, if I'll just give it a more space. Here you can see I'm again evaluating my whole expression where I'm going to use a calculate table text function. And here I'm summarizing it using add columns. Over here, you can see the sales and calendar year and date months. It's uh, pretty simple because I'm summarizing the sales table and then my current sales amount, which is going to show me the current sales amount then and then sales amount for the current quarter in the previous quarter. I'm using over here my calendar year as 2008 and I'm also using month should be less than equals to nine. That means that should be less than or equals to September. So let's run it. Here you can see that my months are over here Jan Feb to September because I already said my month should be less than equals to September. Year as I mentioned calendar year should be 2008. So it's returning me the same year. Then I have month number as well. Then there is a current sales amount. Then there is a current sales quarter amount. So you can see for the first three months it's same. Then coming to the four, five and six month, it's same. Then it's again changing for seven, eight and nine. So that means we are calculating sales amount of first three quarters over here. If we are going to talk about the sales previous quarter, over here, notice that the sales of previous quarter, that means in the second quarter, you should get the sales of first quarter. Over here, my sales of the second quarter is this one and which is exactly matching with the sales of current quarter. That means it's calculating correctly. However, if you are surprised why I'm calculating this one over here. So this is coming from the year 2007, not from this. So last quarter of 2007 is this sales. That's why you're getting this value over here. Now let's make some change. Rather than this, what I'm going to say for 2006, but I don't have any data for 2006. That means it should not display me any values. So again, let's hit on this run button. And you can see there's nothing now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna change my calendar year to 2007 and since i have no sales amount in 2006 that means the first quarter of the column of sales previous quarter should be blank so let's try this one too and here you can see that sales previous quarter first quarter is blank because we have no sales amount in the last quarter of 2006 now I hope that you have a full understanding of parallel period text function. You can utilize this text function into different scenarios according to your own requirements. If you have any further questions or concerns, please don't forget to connect with us. Or if you are over here for the very first time, please do subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI and Azure videos. See you in the next video.